What's up everybody, Milanist here and welcome to the Calligraphers podcast. This is a show where I talk with some of the most inspiring and influential artists in the world of calligraphy, lettering and sign painting with the goal of exploring their mindset and understand how they became successful. Today I'm very excited to speak with someone that's a true inspiration to a lot of people including me. Someone who I've been following for the last two, three years and uh, someone that's been going crazy in the last year, year and something. Lots of big projects, lots of success and this someone does a lot of experimenting, is not afraid of new things, always tries to deliver something inspiring and motivating. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm super hyped and excited to talk with Stefan Kunz. So, hi mate, how are you doing? I've been very excited to have you in the show. It's been some time since I wanted to happen. So, what's up with you? Good, how are you? I'm, uh, I'm happy and excited to be on this, on this show and on your podcast and finally put a face to the account. That's always nice. Yeah, that, that's, uh, that's funny because that's actually the first time we ever talk and see each other other, other than seeing you in your stories or videos. So, that's pretty cool. Exactly. Yeah, that is very cool. <laughs> So mate, uh, can you tell me a little bit more for the people who don't know you or even those who know you but don't know so much about your story, like how old are you, where are you born and uh, mm-hmm. uh, what some info about your background, when and how did you get involved and interested with letters, calligraphy or lettering, whatever it started with you? Yeah. So my name is Stefan Kunz. I'm a lettering artist from Zurich. Uh, currently, I'm right now in, I'm in Sydney, but I'll, I'll be back in, in uh, Switzerland soon. I'm 28 years old. I'm going to be 20. No, wait. How old am I? 20? This year, I'm going to be 28. Oh, man, I'm already, already planning ahead. That's why I felt so old, 28. And I, I would have almost said that I would be, be 29 this year. And then I'm like, no, 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 this is going way too fast. I'm 27 years old, I'm gonna be, no, again, wrong. My name is Stefan Kunz, I'm a lettering artist from Zurich and I'm 27 years old, I'm gonna be 28 uh, this year in 2019. And um, yeah, so I, I was always interested in, in drawing, I drew as a kid, I played with Legos, I did all these creative things. And um, as I was growing up uh, in school, I was really interested in graphic design and just doing a job with, with something creative. So my passion was always to draw whatever I wanted to become. So for a long time, it was an architect, it was a shoe designer, car designer, um, went through all these different phases. And um, funny enough, I remember that my uncle, he's a, a stone uh, mason uh, thing. So he, like, he's one of the guys who would actually carve into um, um, the, how do you call them? the stones uh t- tombstones he would actually carve tombstones and and in really nice calligraphy which is incredible and so he gave us a uh on i think around christmas new years at least 10 15 years uh, ago he gave us like a little introductory on on lettering and especially calligraphy and type design and how he draw letters um but that didn't stuck with me. So that wasn't the initial point where I was like, yes, this is what I wanted to do. So I actually got into more graphic design later on, uh, designing like postcards, uh, like cards, like invitation flyers for our, our youth group at church. And, and so I got a little bit interested in that and always try to push the boundaries. But um, my whole career shifted when I actually went into banking. Like I, I did one year of art school um, where that's like a preparation course. Um, and, and I was really interested in, in pursuing that, but one experience I had, and that was major was I, uh, a teacher of ours gave us a exercise to do that week. And it was about, uh, creating anything we wanted. And we had a week's, um, worth of time. And I was super excited because like we could create whatever we wanted. We had a whole week to create it, to do it. And, and I just, couldn't come up with anything. I, I, I didn't know what to do and I got stuck. And even though that I wanted to create something amazing, I actually f- finished that week not doing anything. And I remember how, how devastated I was after that week. And so 
I thought I didn't have what it take what it takes to be an artist, and so I quit that and left that alone and went into banking. And so for three and a half years, I actually devoted my life to to money and and how uh, those big corporations. And so it's it, it's it's really interesting. I I learned so much from that time, and I'm really happy that I did. Um, but after those three and a half years, I said to myself, like, I, I cannot see myself doing that for more than five more years. And, and that was a point where I want to say like, either I continue, but I know that I'll not do it for more than five years or I just quit now. And, and it really comes that point where you ask yourself, like, why should I do something that I know that I won't do for a long time? Like, if I know that I'm not going to continue doing that, why should I continue doing that? And and so like invest more uh, more years into that was wasn't an option, and I'm happy that I quit. But I, at that time I only had begun Instagram like a little bit like two years ago. I I started to revamp my Instagram and posting more um, focused content. So it was more about like finding an app on Instagram uh, on the iPhone and creating like graphic design pieces. And that's how I got into creating compositions, creating um, like type pieces with with quotes, and learned that this was kind of what it what I wanted it to be about. And and so it, it that's kind of how it morphed into lettering because at one point I got stuck with what the app actually allowed me to do, and to to break out of that I I had to go back and start drawing again by hand. And I was totally new to lettering. I didn't actually know that lettering was a thing. I didn't, like I knew graffiti was a thing and people did graffiti professionally. I didn't know that people were drawing letters for a living. So back then in 2014, I think, yeah, early 2014 was when I started and there were no, like one, you, you don't know what you're searching for if you don't know that what the name is of that, what you're doing. Like I thought it was type. So I searched like on Pinterest, I searched type. But it never came to my mind that to search for tutorials or something like that. And there wasn't any back then. Like, it wasn't a trend back then. And and so I just started doing that. And, and I was really interested in growing my Instagram. That was a goal of mine. Not doing any business, just do that. And that was a hobby. And on the side, I did wedding photography. So I was also a professional photographer. And that's kind of how I made my, my money um, in that in the year where I quit my job. And, and suddenly that Instagram was starting to grow and it was like growing from, from like, I had grown it by the time I quit, I had grown it to 10k. And, and to the point where like, I started growing it to 10, 20, 30 um over the next years and then i saw the beginning of the year i saw like my my growth was about 200 uh followers a day and i i did my banking thing i went back to excel i i pulled down a spreadsheet and that was um like i saw i would gain about um if i gained 200 followers every day for a whole year um, I would reach exactly a hundred thousand just by the end of the year. So December twenty ninth, two thousand sixteen, was was when I thought like this is actually the year that I could reach a hundred thousand. And so I had a goal, and that was my milestone to reach. And and so at the end of the year, I had those hundred thousand. Like I I reached it way before, and then last year uh, last year was two hundred thousand. No, three hundred thousand. Yeah, 2017 was 200,000, uh, 18 was 300,000, and I'm already at the beginning of 19, I'm already almost at 400,000. So it's going great right now, but still, it's, that's been kind of my, my, my journey. And yeah, business-wise, 2017 was when, when a lot of things came into place and when I decided, like, I, I never saw it as a... Um, like as a possibility to, to do that as a job because I always had problem with client work. Um, there was always these revisions and I hated like changing everything and I felt like I'm not getting paid for changing everything. And so I was frustrated with that. And then I realized like if I actually did it right, I could, I could do it actually as a job. And so a lot of things came into place. Like I had a book that was coming out. I, had, uh, I was just about to record a course and and I had more jobs and more clients coming in, and so 2017 was when it when it took off, and and 2018 was when everything 
blow, was blown out of the water, like things that I never imagined could happen. Like for example, having a um, a billboard on Times Square was was the most insane thing that happened to me that year. Um, got to travel a lot and do, yeah, just work for, for amazing companies, amazing people, had like amazing collaboration with these clients. And yeah, so it was pretty amazing. And starting this year, I'm just like really, really frustrated not frustrated i'm i'm um i just i cannot believe it can get any better than that and and i have to fight that feeling or that thought and just like trusting that no actually you know what this year is going to be even better than the last two years like it's just going to be amazing and we'll see what happens yeah it's it's funny because now when i listen to your story uh i think somewhere in 2016 was the time when i discovered your your work on instagram and i started following you but even in the intro of today's podcast, I said like the last year, year and a half, you're really booming like crazy. And you've mentioned some of the stuff, but uh, when you, okay, your focus was like developing your Instagram, but other than this, uh, how did you get with the strategy? Of course, you, you got some insights, uh, info from like experience from the bank. As you said, you, you pull up your Excel sheet, but like, mm-hmm. There are mm-hmm. many artists who, I don't know why, but for them it's very important to have like huge audience. Of course it's cool, but like, uh, what are the things that helped you and what were the struggles when you decide building your Instagram big? What you had to do on a daily basis or how how, how was it going? Okay, so the the interesting thing about growing your Instagram, it's not about having a big following. That's not the important parts. Um, like you can have a huge following and if that's what you feel that counts as me being better, um, than you are, then that's completely wrong. And I see like, like I've just did a collab with, uh, Mark Canesco and Sirocco studio. Um, and, and both of them have uh, way less following than I have, but they are so much better than I am at, at what they do. And, and just that collaboration proves that these guys are amazing and and i was just lucky to be part of that like what i could give them is also just like here i i want to showcase that to my following and and just show them that there are some amazing other artists out there your number actually doesn't prove anything how many likes you get per post um don't like are not a measure of how good your work is but what helped me is it kept me pushing to, to keep growing my art. Because I'm posting, I, I've tried to post daily, which is pretty impossible now nowadays. Um, like I'm happy if I can post two, three times a week. I still have this this desire, this, this feeling of I need to post daily um, to have something ready for every day. And I've started to reuse old work because like there are still some cool pieces that I want to share there, especially the message of some pieces I really want to share. But what helped me in my days as a creative actually was growing on Instagram was the important part that I had a goal and a mission of creating for something. So if like as a creative, you always need some goal to push yourself to get better, to do something. And having a platform to publish that um, is is something that helps you to grow. And for me, growing my audience n- meant that I need to grow my skills, um, finding new ways, new creative ways to to do something new, to to change up what I've been doing all along, and trying new things was so important to grow my audience. Um, people don't want to see the same old. Um, if you want to be able that people will talk about your account, then you need to create things that people will talk about. And so with all these things, with all this uh, information, I I knew like, I need to to be creative and I need to create more and create better. And I need to to give people value for for them to follow me. Um, And so growing my Instagram was important as an artist, just in the fact that I pushed myself artistically and and that helped me to grow as an artist um like we could have done that in a different way like if you given me a hundred bucks if my work was better every time then i would have done that like there's no real value in 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 having just a number what i what i love about the audience that i have is is just the fact that i get to inspire and encourage these people uh as often as i can 
and and giving them that because I know that social media is is a place where people get frustrated, uh, just compare themselves to others, and I do that too. That's a problem. And so I want to break out of that. I want to bring value to people, like quotes that inspire and encourage people to to actually like be yeah be positive and and be encouraged on that day. And I and I see that in the comments that I receive, and I'm so grateful for that. Is that people like respond to this is exactly what I needed today, like I needed to hear today, and that's exactly why I do this and why I'm so so excited about doing that. Even though like. Right now, I'm I'm creatively I'm like down. I I've pumped out so much content at the beginning of the year because it was going great. Like you get that sense of fulfillment with growing numbers, but also with like you you putting out work. You get more follows. You put out work. You get likes and followers, and, and it's a great balance. But as soon as the likes and the followers drop, it gets harder to produce content, and that's a real thing. And and I I myself try not to to let myself be be uh, measured by that just like I still want to keep producing content and I need to try to inspire myself and produce work because I'm inspired not because I want to get more followers or more likes like it's it's yeah it's finding that balance between those two yeah I see but it's funny because I follow lots of artists and some of them are really good but I can see like you and maybe like two, three, four, I don't know, not so many more artists are like having the success because of course there is the Instagram algorithm who does stuff to like not reach everybody, but people yeah. like you and few yeah. others, somehow you figured a way to touch your audience that they engage mar much more than on the rest of the artists, you know? So I was wondering if you mm -hmm. know what was the key that you made like people to engage so much like what's the point that touches them so much because i i follow a lot of artists and some of them are really great but they neither have like the audience or like the interaction of likes and comments like you have yeah so there there's this thing where you need to bring value like if you're just sharing your work you're just putting it out there and that's kind of like hey here's my portfolio deal with it and and that's that's not the nicest like i i'm not like if if i want to find inspiration i i rather go to pinterest or like yeah i'll i'll follow some some of my colleagues uh my friends that that i like marconesco like incredible artist and 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 i'm just so stunned by his style and everything but I don't need to actually browse through Instagram to to see that, like um, see variations of that. And I feel like a lot of artists feel that they they should just share like the um, the process or or uh, what what they produce and and share that and hope that people will engage with that. And some people do. Like Gemma O'Brien is a great example. She she can share work that she creates. And and just important note, I'm not I'm not wanting to devalue or, or or say something negative about anyone. Like that's not the goal of this. It's it's just an observation that I've done and why I'm doing the the things I'm doing. So observing um, Gemma O'Brien's account, and that's what I do a lot. Is like I observe other people's account and see how they do things. And her account is she's an amazing artist, and she just she can just create work, and it's just like it's it's eye candy for 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 your eyes and you're just stunned but she doesn't have have to engage so much with her audience like her her audience is massive because she's an amazing artist who like just like hey here I share my work and it goes up but for me it's like I need to engage my audience I need to bring them value so that they get something out of it because like I want people to to like ex want to see my posts. I want people to to wait for my posts like that they that they have the notification on because if they know for example and that's my theory of it, my observation is if I if I would send you an SMS every day encouraging you, like you would be looking forward to that SMS. Like if I would only send you like hey, this is what I created today, you might be like hey, stop sending me those pictures because you don't get any value of that. But if I send you something that is for you, to encourage you, to give you value, I guess you are more likely to like, hey man, I haven't gotten any text in like two days or three days. What's up, man? I, I want some encouragement. 
and and so that's where you bring value and and going through that like i've like i've gone through a lot of changes on instagram like a lot of people always say like oh my stuff doesn't work on instagram anymore or oh my content doesn't get showed and like the the algorithms have changed and it's like um it's funny because it sounds like oh the gods are against me or like now i'm suddenly unlucky and and a lot of people think that way and i've always seen it as a challenge of like how can i how can i figure this out how can i see what has instagram changed where are they what are they pushing now more what are they trying to do and at the same time just knowing like yeah it will change like something will come back but it challenges me as an artist to be more creative to to focus more on what i can do and 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 that's that's the real world like some clients will come to you and it's suddenly like you'd always do the same thing and suddenly your clients um say nike doesn't want to come back to you like yeah we've done this campaign we've done this style we're moving on and and you just expect like why why is my why are all the clients like leaving me now because you've done the same thing over and over and you expect like no change like i've had a friend who's an artist she she blew up and she she raced me by and was almost um at 300,000 before me and but then it suddenly changed and she she was falling backwards like she didn't have any growth anymore and her success for a period um she didn't know how to translate that into into continual success i haven't grown in one year like exponentially more than other years like i've i've been growing like in a steady pace and and like more exponentially and getting higher and higher like right now that's why i'm almost at 400 already at the beginning of the year instead of usually at october around october is usually when i would hit the 100 mark again and so i'm i'm using that growth right now and just trying to figure out all right how can i how can i improve on that like is it because i just grew that much that more people are talking about me i don't know but these are all the questions that i'm trying to ask myself and and observe other accounts how they're functioning and translate that to how i can do better so in the beginning you were doing lots of chalk lettering on wall i mean you're still doing it but like i i guess in few years ago it was much more frequently can you speak a little mm-hmm. bit about this like uh, uh how did you get interested in uh, do chalk letter on a wall like People usually see it in under a minute, but I know for sure it takes some hours to do a piece like this and you've produced, I don't know, maybe hundreds of them. Uh, I Yeah, I'm not sure if I've already hit the 100 mark, um, but the, how it started was really funny. My uh, a friend of mine, she, she's a, she lives in a flat with uh, three, four other women and, and she reached out and like all the flat, like I've been there a couple of times and I'll really good friends of mine she reached out and just said like hey we're we're drawing on a like we're creating a chalk wall so we're painting our our wall in a chalk wall color and um we just wanted to see if you'd be willing to draw something on our chalk wall that would mean so much to us and because we know we can pay you um she and and that's that's where she was doing a good thing is like hey i know i know i cannot pay you for what you're worth um and and y- like your work is worth something um but what i can do and is like give you a beans of coffee she knew i love coffee and and i what she didn't know about was that i actually wanted to be like i wanted to draw on a chalk wall like i was i was just about a couple of days earlier was just about to to ask on facebook friends uh or my my friends on facebook to see if anyone had a chalk wall at home because i wanted to do that Um, I've seen it a couple of times on Pinterest and that was something I hadn't tried before. And so I I responded to her and I'm like, oh, yeah, well, you know, like it's it's a lot of work and I've not really done it before. But yeah, I'm, I'll, I'll do it for like for a bag of coffee. And and so like you play that card around and you're like, yeah, yeah, like let me do you a favor. I, I know I'm, I'm doing you a favor here. Uh, she didn't know that she was doing me a favor. And so I did that. I was super pumped and like a couple days later I'm like, "Hey, can I come back and draw something else?" And she's like, "Yeah, sure. Um yeah, but we don't have more coffee at the moment for to give you because she's a stewardess. She travels around a lot and she would always pick me up a, a, a bag of coffee. 
And it kept on going, like, I kept on asking back and like, hey, can I come back? Can I draw something? Um, and, and so she realized like, wait a minute, you actually like doing that. We don't have to give you anything anymore. Uh, the wall is enough. And so it was true. I, I kept on going back and not only was, was it great to draw on that chalk wall, but I got to spend a lot of time with her. And she's also the girl that is always on the pictures in uh, the earlier works. Um, and, and yeah, it's usually, it's been a long process. It's been between an hour, like an hour is a fast one. And, and now, yeah, they go easily up to three, four hours, five hours sometimes, uh, to draw them. And, but it's, it's been a huge success for, for my account as well. Um, people have been loving them. I've, I've enjoyed the, the, the mix between, creating a piece like creating a quote but also mixing it with photography using my skills as a photographer to to implement an idea that would actually illustrate the quotes and there are a couple of one of my favorites like the uh on the bright look on the bright side i'm not addicted to cocaine is where I, like throw chalk in the air and it was like it was super messy doing that one um the same one like throw kindness around like confetti we actually got a few confetti bombs and like like twisted them up and and like her expression on her face when when like it just pops is just priceless and yeah so a couple of those were just were just super fun um i i've seen i don't know if i've seen all of them but like most of them which i seen i love them and i just wanted to know did you love your chow quotes since the first one or it took some walls to make before you were happy with your product yourself and how did you see like uh, with each other, which with each next wall, the progress was going and? So the first one I did was definitely a challenge because you start something completely fresh. And, and it's like you go into like a cold shower. When you go into a cold shower, you're like immediately, you stop breathing, you're like. <laughs> and like, I, I, I've been loving doing this because I've been working out more lately and my muscles need the cold water to like, just to relax. And it feels so good, especially with the heat right now in Sydney. Um, and doing something fresh, like drawing on a chalk wall is kind of the same thing. You're like, you're like kind of overwhelmed with all the things you need to figure out and, and do. And, and it's the same thing when I did my first mural, like a big project for, for Bombay, Bombay Sapphire in, in Berlin. It was, it was something completely new and I was stressed. I was like, I could hardly breathe. But at the same time, it's, it's really cool to try something new and and i love the this exhilarating feeling um it's not necessarily always a nice one but it's 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 great because as soon as you get into it you're like oh you know what i actually know what i'm doing and and yeah like my my um, motto is still create something today even if it sucks like create something even if it's not perfect uh don't seek perfection don't try to make it um too perfect but really keep on producing work uh, making it the best you can and always add one more step because that one more step could actually like you'll learn so much from that one step and next one you'll either incorporate that again or you'll try something new and with every project you finish you'll learn so much more and that's why I, I love this quote and and that's the same thing I, I learned about chalk walls like there's a different size of canvas you're drawing with a different medium and and you don't know all the techniques so you gotta learn as you go and it's always been what i've been doing it's been with business like learn as you go try to like i i started reading a lot of business books and and entre entrepreneurial books and to to see like how can i improve my business and and that's the cool thing about having a business is as soon as i read something that i like or that i feel like oh this is good advice let me just try to incorporate that instantly and and you learn and you grow uh, how important it is for you practice and how, how much time you spend practicing and do you still practice like our days or it was more like uh, before? So I, I don't do this, um, like I don't really do calligraphy or like this uh, script. So practicing, I'm not really practicing the, the perfect strokes and making that my, my one stroke is perfect. Um, but what I do is creating work and that's how I practice. That's how I keep progressing is, is by producing more, uh, more work and, and sketching more, putting more ideas down. Um, 
and that's how I practice. I don't get to 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 just sit down an hour and just like go through my strokes and just like perfect that, um, because I I do more drawing than than practicing calligraphy and the perf like the ups and down strokes. Yeah, I know, but because for me. I do calligraphy a lot, but sometimes I've tried to do lettering stuff like you do. And for me, it's really hard. And I guess I need to practice a lot to like, I don't know, to get used to drawing the letters or stuff like this. And I don't know. For me, it seems like lettering, it's it needs more practice than calligraphy does sometimes. Um, I, I think, yeah, practice comes through, through making things uh, in lettering. So if you... If you draw more letters, if you experiment more, if you like, if you play around with with a word, with a style, um, that's how you practice. It's not necessary that you practice one style. Like, like you could show me a style of 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 design, and I'll try to figure out like how, like, like I look at the the pieces on the back of your um, of your wall, and I try to figure out like, can I. Can I draw the same passion or like draw another word than the the passion that that is on the top um, on the top right or left, um, and and like how can I do that? And that's kind of how I practice is like figuring out how things are made. And again, that's that's all the 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 work that I do is observing a lot and trying to figure out things on my own and see how I can can uh, do that myself. I see. Well, you've done also a lot of lettering on different objects, like you've done lettering on a baseball, on a on a toilet, <laughs> you've done it on shoes, on guitars and on cars and many different stuff. Like, uh, what inspires you to do it on the objects and uh, which one was the most struggling and hard one and which one was the, the one you most uh, enjoyed and liked the finished product? Um... I wonder where it came from uh, that I started doing lettering on objects. I I cannot actually recall where it comes from, but it it's a way to to customize your objects and make it like unique. And and that's I guess that's what's what fascinated me about doing that. Um and then came the urge of like what else could I do? And how far can I go? And so one of my big dreams is still like lettering on an airplane, like not just any airplane is like a big airplane and, and seeing that airplane take off, like in front of my house is like, whew, that would be amazing. Um, and, and last year I said, uh, if, or when I reached 300,000, I would letter on a car. So it was kind of like this, this deal I made with my followers that I would do it. And it was a good trigger because even though that I want to do it and I could do it, um, sometimes I, I strive perfection in that sense that I, I want to do it perfectly. Uh, so like the setting must be right, like the, the car must be the best car that I could find and all that. And, and, and it must be for, for, for a good reason to do it. Um, and, and somehow that didn't work out that I could just come up with myself. So I, I needed that trigger of when I reach, reach that milestone, I'll do that. And a friend of mine, I told that a friend of mine, so I got accountability to that as well. And he would help me film the whole thing. And man, when I, I reached 300 on, on a Sunday, on a Monday, I had coffee with him and he said like, all right, let's do it on Thursday. And I was completely overwhelmed and completely like, wait, what? Thursday? Um, so I had no time to think and just had to do it, but we got a Ford Mustang. It was just an incredible car. We only did half of the car because the car is big and we wrote about, I think, 200 names of, of, of some of my followers, um, and, and friends and, and, but it was a big deal. It was a fun day. I, I met someone else that, that helped us on, on that day and it was just an incredible day. So that was really awesome. Um, Something else that I like to do was like drawing on laptops, like on the back of a, of a MacBook. That was also really, really fun. And yeah, um, most challenging though, what would that be? Um, I think it's something that must be round or not like completely flat. Um, 
but I couldn't recall what it is. Like shoes are hard because they're not super, like they're flexible. Uh, but I don't think that was the hardest one. I really can't remember. I know that there is one that I just, I just don't remember it. Maybe I've just tried to c compress my, my memory of that and just like forget it. <laughs> Maybe the bowl or like the bottle of Coca-Cola, I don't know. The bottle of Coca-Cola, yeah, that one was just small. And it's funny because the story behind that one, so I was at a conference um, with Adobe and um, they, had, they had a partnership with Coca-Cola that you could design like a Coca-Cola um, sticker. And, and I knew I already had done a bottle before. Um, and I thought like, instead of designing a sticker, why not just do the whole bottle? It will stand out a lot more than any other design, especially with all the other bottles. Like they had a table full of bottles and I was like, how can I stand out and be better than anyone? Or like, how could I be noticed? And, and so I went back to my hotel room. I drew on one of those bottles. I told the girls like, hey, I'm just gonna draw it on a bottle and bring back. And, and we did, but then the next day I came back and I wanted to see it again. And they said like, yeah, somebody stole that bottle. And I was like super shocked and like, ah, oh, bummed out that somebody had the nerves to actually take that and just steal it. So what I did, I was, I, I went back and asked for another bottle, did the whole drawing again, brought it back and gave it to them and said like, could you please make sure that this doesn't get stolen? And I was like, yeah, sure, we'll, we'll take care of it. And a day later, I, I saw a, um, a post from, from someone who tagged me in it and, and he tagged me like posting that, that picture and I looked who it was and I found out that it was a creative uh, design director from, from Coca-Cola who, who, who was super, who loved that design so much. And so that's kind of how I got in contact, in touch with, with him at first. And, and just like, yeah, just um, texting back and forth and I got to do their their um, Christmas invite um, in 2017 and, and last year. And I don't know if that has anything to do with, um, with the project that I got to do uh, just recently. But yeah, like Coca-Cola uh, did the big, the big campaign with them for World Kindness Day and just positivity. And so, yeah, that was fun. Okay, at, at one point you started doing uh, lots of iPad lettering and what, what point was this? Like how was the change and I guess you liked it because you stick to it. Like what are the benefits of doing it on iPad and how did, did this change your way of work? Yeah, so um, I really I started really early doing digital lettering. I like I love paper, but at the same time like the the mix between typo and photo which where my website name comes from typo x photo like the cross um came early from me doing on on photoshop doing pieces where i just incorporated like the city name so i have like new york city and i stand on one of a high building on on top and and i have the name of the city like right mixed into the background like the type would actually stand in huge letters in the in in the skyline and and so I got a vacuum tablet for my uh, brother to use. Um, and I started drawing like on, on a tablet for a while um, and used that as, as a pad um, and did a lot of design on Photoshop. And when the iPad was released, I thought it was cool. Um, I thought it was all against what, uh, <laughs> what Steve Jobs was, was talking about. Like he always said like no pens, like that's what his devices are all about, like no pens, only finger. And, and so I th found it strange that they actually introduced a pencil. Um, and and I, I, I went to the Apple store and tried it out, didn't like it at first, like didn't see an app that was really good for that. For that. And I think, I think I only tried the Adobe uh, apps at that point um, and, and kept on doing, but like my, the, the, the vacuum tablet that I had was a Cintiq, so it has a screen inside, so you could actually draw on the screen, you don't have to look up, which is great. But I always had to, to bring a HDMI cable to plug it into my laptop, plus a power plug to plug into a power outlet. So even when I went to a uh, cafe or something, like I had to plug it in. Like I could, I could take it with me, but I had to plug it in. And that was really, really annoying. So, um, 
on one trip that I went on to London, I uh, went to a conference for like three days and and I know that the return policy for Apple was was to like, you can always give it 30 days back. So I just bought it, tried it out and yeah, it came back. I loved it so much. I didn't want to return it, but I did one mistake is I bought the small iPad. And so a couple of months later, I think I I bought the bigger iPad and then just, and then after a couple of months then, I I like the storage, I was running out of storage, so I had to buy another iPad, another big iPad that had more storage. And then two weeks or two and a half weeks later, they released the the new iPad. And of course, I wanted to get the new iPad. So yeah, in a short, like in about a year, I bought like four iPads. Um, but because since since I make money with it, it's like an iPad is less expensive than a computer and a camera. So I like it wasn't a problem to afford it, but still, I I went through a lot of iPads. <laughs> I see that, that that's that's kind of something, but it's really cool. So yeah, uh, you also do or like I don't know how exactly it's 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 the thing that's going it, but you create some products with the iPad. You did some grids, then you did a builder for letters or something like this. Yeah. How, yeah. What yeah. inspires you and how did you came with those ideas and how much are the, did they help other people? I guess the, lots of people were happy with it. I remember when you yeah. released the grids, I bought some of them and they were really cool because you can use them on the computer, you can print them and do lettering on paper. So how you came with ideas like this? What pushed you to do them? So. I'm always trying to to uh, find solutions to make my life easier. And like, if if there's anything that annoys me, I'll try to figure out a better solution or 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 just something that will help me to make it easier. And doing a lot of composition, um, I run out of ideas a lot faster. And and so so whenever I try to come up with a new project, I always looked at some old uh, pieces that I made, some other people's pieces. And, and I could just like instantly see how their composition was like structured, like the skeleton of, of that composition. And, and for me, that was obvious. I, I, I knew I always had that. And then at some point I was like, just, you know what? I, I can just actually make it even easier for me just making the grids and, and just use those as, as um, something that I can help myself just fill out whenever I need it and have a lot of different options uh, for me. And I posted that on, on Instagram stories and, and I got so many messages of people who are just like, oh, I need this, this is amazing. And at that time, like I've been using that for a while. I, I didn't know that this could be helpful for others, but of course it helped me a lot. It could help others. And, and that was one of the first products that I, I put out that just like, it blew my mind in how well it did. Um, and, and a lot of people got them, a lot of people use them. And, and it just makes like, it's a big problem that we all have. It's, it's how to come up with new compositions. It's like how to place the text and make it look awesome every time. It gets frustrating. Like you, you try to create something yourself and you're like, you get stuck by like, how do I fit that word here? And like, how do I do the hierarchy right so that the words stick out perfectly? It was like, it's, it's annoying. And it's frustrating. And a lot of time I've stopped creating just because I didn't have any idea. I didn't know what to do. And and suddenly this piece, this product was super helpful for not only for me, but for so many others, because like you don't have an idea, boom, create something. Like you take a grid, you put it up and, and you just like, you, it's it's easy to create. And and then together with Ian, we, we did the grid builders It's like, well, if you figure it out, like, well, let me just get back quickly with the grids as well if the composition grids, the finished grids, it's a great way if you're, if you're struggling with composition, this is the easiest way to get started with composition is like, you just fill those out and then you start trying to figure out how you can, can better yourself. And as soon as you develop your skills, as soon as you f feel like, oh, I'm, I'm over that, I've like, I, I don't need that, that's baby steps for me now. Then we have the, the, the grid builder. It's like you start building your own grids. Like 
I still need to make those lines perfect and I still need to put them into a box. So the grid builder is actually just a way to make that a lot faster. Instead of drawing like a, a rectangle or those different shapes, a, a nice uh, curved uh, uh, box, you just pick it out and you just put it into to, to procreate. It's like a brush that's already done. And, and at the same time, we're trying to think of like what else, what other problems are we struggling with? And one of them was drawing letters like, man, I always try to, I always drew some of those boxes that we use in the letter builder and drawing letters perfectly, like draw an S uh, perfectly is so complicated. And, and I was struggling every time with that. And so is unstable Ooh. is uh, now it's back. Um, so we, we figured out that there must be a better way to draw a letter. And we figured like, I've always used this system that every letter is built pretty much out of a certain, a certain like bricks, like Lego bricks, and you piece them right together and you get the right, right letter. And together with Ian, we figured out a way how to, to create those, those, uh, builders to, to make it just perfect and easy to draw any letter the way you need it to and in different styles. And you can still like, you can put all your creativity into it just helps you to draw block letters so much faster and so much easier. And we're trying right now to do that for, for script letters, a lot harder, um, and, and to, to make that for cursive letters, but it's, I, I think it's doable and who knows, maybe we'll make it happen. Um, but, but that's been the, the, the greatest thing about that is helping other people make lettering a lot more accessible, a lot more easier. And, and yeah, being able to use it on paper, like on Photoshop, on any device you actually wanted to, that was our goal. And, and like, we still try to show that to more people. Like I, I still know that a lot of people don't know about those products and we're just trying to figure out like how we can reach more people, how we can tell them more because we believe that these products like it's it's like investment of maybe 19 bucks for 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 these products but it's you save so much time doing that and and for me like i don't know i've i've saved so much time doing that and it helped so many other people and we still see and we're so pumped to see other people posting about like how they use the letter builder, like how they teach their parents how to use the letter builder and draw letters easy. Um, we've seen so many great things with that and we're so pumped of people using it. And it's like, I'm super proud of, of, of all of those people who get to letter better with those products. So where can people get those products? So either on like composition grids, uh, they're available on my shop on typoxphoto.com. Uh, slash shop and you can just type in grids comp composition grids and I think it should be one of the first thing uh, let me just see composition grids yeah it's the first thing you'll find on my websites um, and and you can download like get those if you if you just want to try them out like just buy them you can try them out there's a 30 days uh, or there's a there's just a refund guarantee like if you don't love them if you don't like them if they don't if they're not for you and it's totally possible that it's maybe not how you work or how you design but you can just try them out i'll i'm happily uh, gonna refund you if you don't like them if you don't feel like they're what you want and yeah that way you can just get them well i don't think anyone will not like them i've i have some of them I've, and i love them they are really amazing and make everything so much easier and it's really cool to use them so i definitely recommend to people who are listening right now and haven't heard of them or never seen them just go and try them you won't regret it thanks man really appreciate that uh, no worries buddy so uh, what's your biggest motivation and inspiration? I know you do lots of uh, quotes from the Bible, but is it only the Bible or there is also other stuff that motivates and inspires you to do work? So the Bible is definitely one of the most inspiring um, uh, like books that I read. Um, like I'm 100% I'm uh, believer in Jesus and, and I like... I feel like this is the, the most modern book or the most contemporary book that there is and it always will be. Um, and, and I totally understand that some people aren't 
and are not into the Bible, and that's totally okay. They don't have to. Um, but I always try to pick things even out of the Bible that people can relate to, and a lot of that stuff you can relate to. But I also try to come up with or find things that will inspire people. Like I usually post and share whatever I find is useful for me. Um, so recently it was, what was it? Um, like done is better than perfect. It's not necessarily in the Bible, uh, but it's, but it just shows you like, yeah, don't overthink things. Don't try to, to come up with things that like, like it's too hard. Uh, just do it, finish it, make it happen. And, and so a lot of people are able to relate with that. And I, I realize that you are more relatable than you think to other people. And you're not the only one going through what you're doing. So always share that and always yeah, connect with people. Do you remember at what point you start uh, having clients? And I don't mean only like a big brand clients, but your first clients. How was the first time you got clients to work for people? And then at, one po at what point you start having like big clients? And how is it to work for a big client? Um, so I think... I don't really remember when the first time was because I've been always doing like little uh, pieces of work doing creating um, some content for 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 clients um, and like jobs for a hundred bucks or not even a hundred bucks like 50 bucks um, but yeah creating more and more was was always um, Yeah, the, the more you create, the more you put your work out, the more you have a style that is refined and defined, people will, and, and people want to have that style, like not just like you're exchangeable as any graphic designer, like if they want your style, um, it, it helps for, for you to, to find bigger and better clients. And um, who was probably one of my first big clients? I think Hallmark, The, the car company in the US was probably one of my first bigger clients. Did some for, for a bank in Canada and, and some others. But yeah, it, it's, it's hard to pinpoint the exact times. But as I, I progressed, like bigger clients came into the picture. Um, my biggest campaign to date that I've done was last year was for the airport in Zurich. Was this whole campaign, the summer campaign uh, with one key visual. And um, that was a, a long process. It was the longest project I've worked on. It was about three, four months um, from beginning to start. Um, and, and yeah, so, so a lot of these clients came in, come out. And it's, um, yeah, it's been an interesting journey overall. What were your ups and downs on your journey? Like, did you have difficult times or moments when you were discouraged and... You, you thought you couldn't go forward and how did you how do you deal with those kind of things absolutely um, actually at the beginning of 2017 um, I was just about to fly well or I was flying to to uh, Utah Salt Lake City to record my first ever online courses and I had a book coming out in a couple months later And so I had a couple cool things going on. And like I said, 2017 was the year that it took off. But just before uh, recording those online courses, I remember I was so like, I had worked so hard and, and I felt so depleted and like out of energy. And I felt so bad about it because I felt that, man, that's weird. Just about when it takes off and when, when it goes really well, that's when like, everything is dropping and I don't want to do it anymore. And, and I felt so bad. And I've had a couple of times where I just felt like, you know what, I want to stop lettering. I want to stop Instagram. I want to quit everything. And I feel we all have these, these times when we just want to drop everything and quit and, and leave. And that's a total normal thing. Um, but what, it's, what is really important is in those moments to always just like take a deep breath Um, mostly it's you, you've overworked yourself. So you need a, a break, at least a day, like, like a pause. And, and what I did back then, what helped me a lot was actually to, to really focus on taking a Sabbath. So Sabbath is like the seventh day where you rest and, and it's a commandment that is, it's like in the 10 commandments. 
And, and not that I want to go all biblical on you or anyone listening to this podcast. For me, it's, it's something like, like I've, I want to work hard. I want to do as much as I can. But somehow in the Bible, they say, it said that you should rest on the seventh day. Work six days, rest on the seventh. And a lot of psychologists and, and people like coaches will, will say the exact same thing. Will say, you, you can only work up to 80%. You can never work 100% full because you're, you're going to deplete your batteries and you're going to just like, like burn out. And most people that I, I feel like or I talk to who, who just are feeling that they, they are in a burnout or getting a burnout, I always ask them one question. I'm like, I don't care how much you work you do or whatever. Like, are you respecting your one day off per week? And they say like, no. And I'm like, yeah, this, this is the first thing you have to try to do. And I, I have to tell that myself often because right now it's, it's more quiet. And I don't respect my, my day off as much as I do because it's like, well, you know, like not every day I work so much and so on, but there's still one day that I really should do nothing and nothing at all. And what I, I started doing that at the beginning of 2017, I really started to respect my, my and I, I use Saturdays for my days off, respect my Saturday as a day off. And, and it changed how I feel like I've started to feel a lot better start to feel a lot like a lot more energy after the day is over i'm like ready to go again for another week and and then until that day and then after that day i'm really like pumped again and going in not another week and and so that's something that i can only encourage people to do is really take that one day of rest per, a week super seriously like don't do anything try to really do the least possible or like what i do because i didn't know what to do is I actually like to spend my day inside in the house and just watching TV and just watch like binge, uh, binge Netflix as, as much as I can and, and eat whatever I want and all that. And then on the next day, like, man, I have, I have energy again to do something else. So you're a hundred percent like, uh, your work is with lettering and this kind of stuff. You don't need to work other things, right? Yeah. So I've, I've, I've done wedding photography um, up to two years ago. Last year was like a couple of friends, like three weddings. And, and like I've really turned down everything else, uh, just focused on lettering. So lettering um, with my shop, with, um, with speaking engagements, with um, paid promotion on Instagram, all these things, like that's all in lettering, yeah. Okay, so can you tell me like you said you have one one day a week that it's off like how goes the rest of your days how goes a usual day of stefan Kunz? <laughs> a usual day is is very hard to define but i when i'm at home it's 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 easier to to say when i'm at home i i usually start my day um get up make myself a cup of coffee um sit down back down in my my chair that i'm sitting on right now here um you can see the beautiful gray uh, lounge chair. I really recommend like having a chair that is really comfortable where you can sit down and just breathe um, is, is a great place to sit down and, and relax. And so that's where I usually kind of meditate and read the Bible. Um, and then after uh, a little bit of time, I, I get up, I start doing my emails, go through everything that came in during the night, during the rest of the day yesterday. And, and start responding to as much as I can, as much as I feel like, and then leave open all the jobs that I still have to do. So those are my to-do lists. And then I, I move into, depends on, on either doing something creative uh, right away, like start drawing. Uh, also think about what post could I do on that day. Um, before I often start working on, on client project, I often think of what can I do? Because I work mostly with natural light, I need to work within the times where the light is the best. And for example, for the chalk wall, the morning time till 4 p.m. or 3 p.m. is when it's the best because otherwise you'll suddenly see the sunlight come into my, my projects. And so those are mostly done in the early mornings. Um, and then after that, um, I, I see what, what to do is I have, what I need to address. Um, if there's anything in the shop, I do. And then every day of the week is a little bit different. For example, my, my Wednesdays, 
are usually days where I work out at the gym with a personal trainer. Thursdays are usually days where I, I work on the newsletter now, um, where I try to focus on what comes into the newsletter, what are the half-baked sketches that, are, that I'm going to share this week. Um, Friday is when I release it, and then I have to do some, some going back and forth. Um, and then during the day, often what I do is respond to, to comments and um, direct messages. I've started to, to try to respond to all the direct messages that I possibly can. Uh, it's it's something that is is hard because like like I wanna I wanna honor and and respect the people who who try to reach out to me, but at the same time it's also hard because sometimes there are just too many coming in, and and the more you respond to, I feel like the more you respond, the more messages you're getting back, and I don't want to be be not responding after that just like that one time. So waking up to like fifty direct messages is like oh. Like you spend like 20, 30 minutes at least to just like go through them all. And, and I have also this weird thing. I feel it's weird, but I think a lot of people have that is to see a notification, like a red one somewhere. It's like, it's, it's annoying. Like I, it stresses me out. And in Instagram, that one dot, like I, I cannot stress that enough. So that, yeah, that hurts. <laughs> need, to, need to change that. Do you have a favorite social media or such place that helped you more than others? Like I know for sure you have Instagram and YouTube, which you don't run as much, but the stuff that you uploaded so far, it's really cool. And I love what you do with your YouTube. Thanks. And I really would love actually see more of uh, your YouTube channel, but do you have a okay. favorite one? Okay. So this, this is, yeah. So, um, Instagram is definitely my favorite place to, to be at the moment. Um, YouTube is a place that I love as well. It's, it's new, it's different, and, and there's so much possibilities that you can do with YouTube. And, I'm, and I've been, like I have a whole content schedule that I, I could come up with and create, but there's one thing that is missing is I need a videographer and I need a, a video editor. And I need to work with one, someone that I can work with full time or like at least do that. And that's, that's something that I'm trying to work, work out and how to do that. But I also need people, like if people really want that, if people really want to, to, to see more, um, is, is it will be helpful to see if I can set up a Patreon where people can like pay for coffee, like um, pay for a coffee, but actually help me pay a video editor and a, a videographer to to actually make it possible because i want to do like um two two studio um updates every, like every two weeks where i talk about like what's been happening what i've been up to in the last two weeks um then do like tutorials do uh feedback rounds where people can send me um where patreons probably will be able to send me their work and have me critique and give them feedback like small coaching um, and, and kind of set that all up. Um, and there's a lot more like create something today, even if it sucks, I have a whole series planned out for that is like cr trying to create something that I see uh, other Instagrammers do or other, uh, lettering artists do, for example, take James, take James Lewis, for example, um, take his style and then just, all right, let me just try to create something that he does and see if I can learn that myself. And, and share that. So it's always about more failure and attempting something, but it's gonna be fun. And yeah, a lot of ideas, a lot of plans. Execution is, is the hard part. Um, but it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's something that I've been working on for a while. And last year was a good attempt at the beginning. It was like pumping out, but as soon as work picked up, like I had no time for that anymore. Um, and like, I have no time to edit and to, 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 uh, film everything myself. So I need someone for that. I see. Do you struggle a lot with procrastination and how do you deal with it? If you do every, every day, day. <laughs> every day, it's, it's really hard. I, I feel procrastination is actually a good thing. Uh, not doing anything is better than trying to fill your time with everything else. Um, but what I do a lot is like, I go on YouTube and I just spend my days on YouTube. However, I don't have to feel as bad or I should learn to not feel as bad because you actually can spend time away from whatever you do. 
um, if you learn something new, if you like explore, if you try to get inspired and not put too much pressure on yourself. That's an important thing. Um, but yeah, we, I think every designer, every creative fights with procrastination. And when you see other people just come up with new things and like keep on pushing out things, it's like, it's frustrating because you feel like they don't struggle with that. But I struggle a lot with procrastination and what I can really do about it is actually like the thing that I find most helpful, but I hate doing is like, um, limit myself to not watching any Netflix, not watching any YouTube or consume any media until I've created something. Um, because sometimes I like the exchange, the break and the balance, but yeah, if I'm not watching anything and I'm bored out of my mind, I'll create something. But if I have something else to do, I'll do something else. Do you have any specific like dream and dreams and goals for this year? Of course, you mentioned your biggest one is probably doing a airplane, but I, I, I have a ton, ton of goals. I, I've, I write them down every end of the year before of what I want for, or what I dream of for the next year. And they're just, they're just all kind of dreams like from drawing on an airplane to let me just check if I can see some others um, designing a Vogue or Times cover or any big uh, magazine cover lettering in an Apple uh, commercial being a New York Times bestseller designing a title for a blockbuster for a movie uh, set a Guinness World Record being on a cover of a top magazine um, drawing in a Super Bowl commercial um, collaborating with other big artists like Casey Neistat's, um, a million dollar projects, man, the list goes on and on. And that's just like the updated version of last year. Last year there's like still like billboards on Times Square and that happened. So I say always dream big, never dream less. Um, but yeah, it's, it scares the heck out of me because I had such an amazing year last year and just, yeah, excited and pumped to see what what God has in store for me this year. And it, I'm not gonna lie, it's, it's really hard to believe for more um, just because I've already experienced so much. And I can just say like to anyone who's starting out or to anyone who's in it and who doesn't see like it's, it's going better, like the doors, you can, you can make so much more money with, with what you would love to do than like just with any other job. And especially you can do so much better things like use of your time. And, but it's still hard to think of something better and bigger to happen every year, but it's possible. And I believe that God can do ev all of that. From everything you mentioned, I, I got something that's really interesting. What's with the Guinness World Record? Is there a specific one that you want to achieve? Well, it can be anything from, well, we've actually talked, I talked with Ian Barnard and with Will Patterson about like uh, partnering up with, for example, Skillshare, uh, because we did like a project in Iceland with them. And one of those ideas would be to, to do one of the biggest lettering pieces in the world uh, and set a w world Guinness record. But after I saw Pokris Lampus do a massive calligraphy thing on the stadium in, in Russia, I was like, okay, this is... This is going to be tough, but it's possible. Okay, you, you've done, you do from time from to time some lectures, or I don't know, like when you go around the world, do you do also workshops or lectures? And if yes, which ones do you prefer to do? And you do some in Europe or where around the world are they happening? How can people get you somewhere? So um, usually I... I make workshops when, when an organization hires me to do one, um, rarely have the time or like, I, I have a hard time finding the time to plan and, and, and structure everything. I'm, I'm not a big planner. I'm not a great, um, uh, manager of, of, uh, what do you say that? Um, just had it in my mind, lost it. Um, time manager. Yeah process manager anything something like that um but yeah usually like for example a school or a university or someone hires me and and they fly me out and get me there and and then i'll do the workshops um i've done one with good type um done with a couple a couple of different ones i'm i love doing workshops i have three 
different workshops like uh, composition masterclass, how to to draw uh, letters and a uh, like a beginner's kind of like deep dive into lettering. So like fast track course. So it touches a, bit, a little bit of everything. And I'm working on a new one that is all about business pricing and strategies. So if, if you want to make that a like your business and how or if you have a business already, but you want to make more money you or you just want to grow it, um, that's something that I love to talk about. And just right now, I'm also starting um, or trying something new is coaching. And, and it's something that I want to get more into and like coach uh, like artists who, who want to become better. And I feel like oftentimes you need just that little push, that little insight, that little different perspective. Uh, to help you go forward and and so that's something that I want to start out and see uh, how I can help other people uh, achieve their goals and their dreams and yeah letter maybe make lettering their profession or yeah be really good at what they do that's pretty cool dude it's like it's really inspiring listening to all the stuff you're saying um, it makes me excited it's really cool so I just Uh, I love uh, what we spoke today. Oh, 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 and, and I, I have two online courses. Um, like Letter Like a Legend is more like a full, um, full class on, on all the styles that I do and how you can learn that yourself. Uh, it touches a little bit of composition as well and a lot of different styles. Um, and I have another one um, about lettering on the iPad, so limitless iPad lettering, which are great. And... In a couple of months or a couple of weeks even, um, there's a new course coming out and that's going to be on social media and how to grow your your page, your Instagram business uh, on social media, how to get to how where it got. And when we recorded that course, I was at under, I was like at 250,000 and now I'm almost at 400. So you can see it still works what I've teached and uh, it still goes on. Where are those courses to be found? They are, you can go through either my websites and go directly, like you can type on uh, uh, learn, or you can uh, go to amandaarneal.com. So she has a, a, um, a sh she hosts all the courses, but you can go through my website, you can go through my Instagram, wherever you find me, they are linked. Well, it was great talking with you, buddy. Same and man. now for, if you have some uh, last words for the people who are listening, for people who are uh, thinking if they should start calligraphy or lettering or anything, or for the people who are struggling, anything you want to say, you give some tips or whatever it is, just do it now. Yeah, definitely want to say that keep on, on creating, keep on, on producing work. Um, don't think too far ahead, don't think too short term, but just keep going every day. And it's not the big jumps that will bring you forward, it's the small steps and every journey, every long journey, every marathon is, is run by single steps and not by a huge leap. So don't try to grow too fast, don't try to grow too slow, but just try to take the steps as it comes, as it goes, and um, you'll progress so far. And the longer you think, and the, the more long-term you can think, the better uh, the outcome will be. And I didn't grow to 400,000 uh, in, in a day. I, I did that over three, four years, and, and with a lot of hard work, but always like one day at a time, And the same with my, my art, with my business, one day at a time, you grow it, you make more, you progress and you learn. And yeah, don't be afraid of failing. Don't be afraid of making mistakes. Mistakes will bring you further and will make you better. And so that's why I want to leave you with create something today, even if it sucks. I think that's a great end. Thanks a lot, buddy. Thanks for your time. You're welcome. Thank you for having me on your show. And I hope to speak again with you in the future if there is something interesting coming. Yeah, of course. So that's it for today, guys. Thanks to all of you who made it to the end. Thanks for listening. Feel free to share with your friends or people who you think might be interested in listening. And expect us again next Sunday when I'll be speaking with David Grimes and his journey and his success and everything around him. Thanks for listening and as always, keep writing.